heart attack on uh, July 31st up in Traverse City. Today I'm uh, going to have a, a double right and left heart catheterization to see if there's any things in my heart that they can fix. Heart attacks, myocardial infarctions are the leading cause of death in the United States and now worldwide. Hips and shoulders. Hips and shoulders. There Hips are shoulders. over a million people who are admitted with a heart attack a year. Very good. Robert Drinkrow is one of the lucky ones. He's had two heart attacks in recent years and doctors have treated him aggressively. He's still alive today. Nope, you're in fine. certain age groups, up to 25% of heart attack survivors end up dying from complications within a year. Hi, I'm Dr. Gurr. Hello, doctor. Hi. Another heart attack inspired a University of Michigan computer science professor to change those statistics. I guess when I was an undergrad, I basically just wanted to get done with my academic career as quickly as I could. I raced through my undergraduate master's degrees, finished in four years, headed out to the West Coast, took up a job there and thought that would be the end of that. But a year into my job, my father had a heart attack. It was a heart attack that could end up saving thousands of lives. He had a silent heart attack that went undetected for a couple of days. And I got very interested in this question that even in this day and age, we're still going to miss patients who are going to have heart attacks. It takes them a couple of days to come to the hospital. There must be something that we can do about people like this. So I went back to MIT. I enrolled in the, the HSD program between MIT Engineering and Harvard Medical School. And I started to explore this question. Can we try and extract information from the kinds of data that we collect routinely in clinical practice and somehow apply sophisticated computation to these unsophisticated but easily accessible kinds of data and extract new information that might help us identify high-risk patients at early stages when they might be treated in a more cost-effective manner more successfully. Syed and his team took a closer look at the electrocardiogram, the EKG or ECG. It's one of the oldest tools in cardiology. So the ECG is, is a wave. It's a somewhat periodic signal because the heart isn't perfectly periodic. Typically, what people have done is if you notice little bumps and divots in the signal, it's considered to be noise. You know, environmental noise, the leads might be moving, something else might be going on. And one of the things that we focused on is that these little imperfections about the signal, so those little fuzziness that you might see, little small bumps, they might actually tell us something useful. To find out what the signals were saying, Syed and his colleagues partnered up with Dr. Ben Skarika. They used complex computational techniques to analyze an entire day's worth of EKG history from more than 4,500 heart attack patients at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. We developed algorithms that could actually data mine large volumes of data and find these patterns that had some prognostic value. Their findings are groundbreaking. We developed a method that studies whether there is consistent noise-like changes that persist over long periods of time. And what we found is that this noise-like variability that persists over long periods of time, even though it's very subtle, actually tells us how unstable the heart is. Because if the heart is trying to beat over and over again, and it's not being able to do this in a consistent manner, then that tells us that's unstable. There's something about the heart which is not repeatable, whereas the heart's function should be. Where I think this will be of particular use is that we can use electrocardiographic data and better identify patients at risk. And it's through identification of patients at higher risk that we can then target therapy and hopefully reduce the risk of complications such yeah, as sudden cardiac so death. So one of the hardest over here. The findings of our work show that we can improve by almost 50%, over 50%, the deaths that are found by cardiography. That's okay. It's all good. I, I think there's, there's almost a magical quality to it that we're trying to make something out of nothing. It really is sophisticated computation applied to unsophisticated data. We're picking out these things that are routinely collected in a clinical setting, and we're trying to extract something fundamentally new out of it, something that can have real-world impact, save lives, affect lots you of let people, me keep track and of that's that, almost right? lying around unexploited right. because of the wrong analytical tools. You're almost discovering a treasure right beneath your nose. Come on in. Hi there. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Everything went well. I just talked to the doctor. How are you feeling? Okay. 